imagine you in my shoes, like the only person I have supporting me is you, mm -hmm. right? And even my closest friends, they were like long gone. So I had like no one, right? I couldn't trust anyone. And you were expecting a lot of me. Like I was like, imagine like I'm giving up all these things, you know, I'm like in the middle of doing that. And then you just don't acknowledge me for it. And it just, I, I was just so mad, like, and I was very disappointed, you know? I have no problem acknowledging that. You probably sacrificed a hundred times more than I will, ever will have to. And I'm grateful for that. I wish like I could take that burden on, you know? Like I was always trying to take on your burdens, but I realized a lot of them just weren't mine to bear. Yeah. And all I could do was like support you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember every time when I felt like I had like the world on my shoulders, you were there to like help me even though you weren't really doing anything. Like you couldn't do anything. Like it was Yeah. <sighs> When do people judge us? And why do you think they do? <laughs> All the time, for everything. Like, I don't think it matters what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I've never been so judged before in my life. On your side, friends and family, on my side, friends and family, people judged us for being together because the concept was so crazy bizarre to them mm -hmm. that anything we did they felt like they had they were entitled to judge because the situation was already taboo enough and it was just like another like tick off their list of like why we shouldn't be together mm -hmm. which I found ridiculous but yeah I had never felt so judged because even like if people judge you behind your back you don't notice but people like blatantly judged every single action to our face, not just every action of the relationship, mm -hmm. but just who we were. Like everything was put on display yeah. and everyone judged it negatively. Yeah. I think everyone just thought like, this was crazy. Like coming from like me, everyone just thought it was a phase, you know? And because they thought it was a phase, like they just thought I was so stupid that I'm making such big decisions on something like on like a phase mm -hmm. you know what I mean because like if I'm being honest with you like in like in the beginning of our relationship when we were like talking about marriage right to me I was like if someone gives me like like a good reason as to like why we shouldn't get married you know maybe I'll think about it right or, like maybe that we're not compatible or like some some sort of that you know what I mean like maybe we're just way too like different people but that wasn't any of those claims everybody was just talking about like how bad of a person I am for even wanting this, mm -hmm. you know? And for you, the things they said about you, it's like, it just got me so mad because it had nothing to do with us. Yeah, thinking on it also like, because a huge thing I was going through, like outside the relationship was just like converting. Mm -hmm. Either people on my side were judging my conversion and my process through it because they felt I did it for you and then people on your side were judging my process of it because they wanted me to be like the perfect like Muslim wife. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think your conversion was harder than most because I think what's special about it is that you get to like discover it yourself, you know? You, know, you like learn to pray and then you learn to do like certain things, right? But for you, it was just pushed on you because like you didn't get a chance to like take a breath. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I remember you told me about this, and I think I backed off a lot after that. Mm -hmm. Because for me, everyone's expectations, they put on me, right? So I wanted that same for you. Because I didn't want to let you down. Because if I let you down without like telling you everything, like I thought you would like somehow be adversely affected by it, right? But that was just so wrong of me because like it was your own thing. Right? It was your own thing. And I just, I don't know, I, just, I think I just accelerated and went faster than you wanted to. Mm -hmm. 
What do I do that turns you on that I'm not aware of? That turns me on? That you're not aware of? The way you walk? I'm definitely aware of that. You're aware of that? <laughs> you tell me all the time. I do? Because <laughs> yeah. cause every time you walk, it's like, yeah, it's like so mesmerizing. Like, I, I don't know, I don't know, like, I want to record you one day while you're walking, you know? Because you also, this was also before you converted. So you had your, like, beautiful hair just flowing, <laughs> right? You had your skirt just, like, bouncing on your hips. And, like, it was, like, it was beautiful. And the fact that you draw so much attention on you, like, naturally, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's your walk. You should, you should walk around more. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> All right. When have you felt the sexiest around me? And what has it taught you about yourself? What comes to mind is a surprising moment when I feel sexy around you, which is when I'm in hijab. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't used to feel confident in that at all. Mm -hmm. But you've really helped me become confident in it. Not all the time. I mean, of course, I struggle just like anyone else. And I have days where it takes us two hours to get me out of the house because I really don't want to wear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you've shown me that I can be sexy and confident, even in modest clothing. And like, yeah, that completely surprises me because I never had that notion growing up. I mean, I come from a culture where the more skin you show, the sexier you are. And that's super normal mm -hmm. there, you know? It just, it just like your persona. It, to me, that's sexier than like someone, you know, to walk around in lingerie. That's uh, someone who's like, who has that like energy in them. I think that's super sexy. Just that energy. Yeah. I think that's what I get from you. So it doesn't really matter to me what you wear. Yeah. How do our different upbringings affect our relationship in ways we didn't expect? This is a good question. I mean, we come from, like, two completely, completely different, different worlds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which have merged a little since I've converted. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing I've realized is, like, we're still always going to come from completely different worlds. Yeah. I think it has to do a lot with family, like, expectations of family. Like, you'll get upset at me for not understanding your family's expectations of you. Mm -hmm them being so against us being together. Not letting us see each other, not wanting us to talk to each other. And we were just constantly either trying to see each other in secret, like always looking over our shoulder, or um, just like defending ourselves to them. And I think it was also us being afraid that they wouldn't, especially on your end. Yeah. I think you held back on connecting a lot because you were worried of what would happen. Because like, you had a lot at stake, way more than I did. And I think even though at the time you were really confident, like you were willing to give up everything, we also worried that like it would change you a lot. So I think you held back a lot. And it wasn't until after the marriage that we were able to like actually like open up and connect. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and that took a lot of time and energy away from us that we could have spent getting to know each other and developing the relationship. And I think we got really lucky when we did get married and everyone started to back off. We suddenly had like room to breathe. And I think we got so lucky because we hadn't really had that space to connect before. Mm -hmm. And that could have just not been there. What does my love feel like? Ooh. Remember um, that day we went to Dumbo? In, like the middle of the night. Which day? The, fir the first night when I like, you know those bells? And I was just kicking those bells. Mm -hmm. um, 
I told you I loved you that day because you told me that you love me, mm-hmm. but that was such a lie. I did not love you then. <laughs> I know. I did not love you. I just, you know, because I just wanted it to be like cinematic, you know, like, because you told me that you, you brought me to like this gorgeous place and like you were all goofy about me, you know? <laughs> and then so I, I, I said it, you know? But I just didn't think I knew what love was then, right? I didn't know what love was. Because you're the only person that I've ever loved or have ever said that that I love you to. Because I always used to think that like when you're in love with someone, you're like, like, you're like constantly giddy, you know? Like you have butterflies in your stomach 24-7. You're like, like all your like hormones are like always enraged 24 7 you know that's what i thought love was like it was like this dream thing but my your love for me brings me peace you know like rubbing like loving you isn't like the tsunami of feelings it's like like a calm gentle river like it's just so peaceful like my heart is at peace it's not searching for anything else it's not beating so fast. It's not like dying either. It's just so peaceful. It's just so easy to love you. Like I don't have to put any effort in trying to love you. It's beautiful. The way you love me is beautiful. The things you do for me. But yeah, i say your love feels very peaceful. I like that. Why did you marry? <laughs> because ever since I was little, I dreamed up like this perfect person for me. And then I found it in you. And even if you and I change as people, we have a very strong friendship. Like you're my best friend. Like ever, <laughs> that I've ever had. And we're very identical too, which does not work out for everyone, but I think for us really works. Mm-hmm. So even if we both change, you and I change a lot. Yeah, we do change a lot. We adapt a lot, and we're also best friends. So I just couldn't foresee a time where we would want to like get a divorce or not work through something because we were just so different. Because even if we do become complete opposites, which I don't really think would happen, but if we did, I still think we would have enough respect and love as best friends to like find a new type of love as new people. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was really important. Yeah, I think if I can answer the question too, I married you because like I saw like a life with you, you know? And it's one thing for someone to just be your lover, but for one, when someone's like your best friend, you know, that's all you need, right? If this were to be our last conversation, what's something you'd never want me to forget? (sighs) Don't cry. We promised each other. Our last conversation. (sighs) I would want to tell you that and remind you about conversations we had in the beginning. Because you and I both believe in soulmates, you know, that we're joined together. So if I'm gone, it doesn't mean I'm gone. They still have an eternity together. You just have to wait for it. Wait to meet me there. And that I love you so much and then <sighs> that I'll be willing to do anything. And I think I proved that to you. And that I will do anything for you. Like as crazy as it might seem. Like I know you had experiences where you couldn't trust when people said that to you, but I think I proved myself and I'll keep proving myself every single day. 
working harder or being more caring that I love you and I'll do whatever it takes. That's what I would want you to remember. Until Jenna reunites us. Hey, if you were watching that video and you're like, wow, I really want to ask some of those questions to my partner, we have the and couples edition. It's on theskindeep.com slash shop.